Chapters thirty through thirty eight of Confessions. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jeanie. Confessions by St. Augustine. Translated by Albert C. Outler. Book thirteen, chapters thirty through thirty eight. Chapter thirty. And I heard this, O Lord my God, and drank up a drop of sweetness from thy truth, and understood that there are some men to whom thy works are displeasing, who say that many of them thou didst make under the compulsion of necessity, such as the pattern of the heavens and the courses of the stars, and that thou didst not make them out of what was thine, but that they were already created elsewhere and from other sources. It was thus, they say, that thou didst collect and fashion and weave them together, as if from thy conquered enemies thou didst raise up the walls of the universe, so that, built into the ramparts of the building, they might not be able a second time to rebel against thee. And even of other things, they say that thou didst neither make them nor arrange them, for example, all flesh and all the very small living creatures, and all things fastened to the earth by their roots. But, they say, a hostile mind and an alien nature, not created by thee and in every way contrary to thee, begot and framed all these things in the nether parts of the world. They who speak thus are mad since they do not see thy works through thy spirit, nor recognize thee in them. Chapter 31 But for those who see these things through thy spirit, it is thou who seest them in them. When, therefore, they see that these things are good, it is thou who seest that they are good. And whatsoever things are pleasing because of thee, it is thou who dost give us pleasure in those things. Those things which please us through thy Spirit are pleasing to thee in us. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, no man knows the things of God but the Spirit of God. Now we have not received the Spirit of the world but the Spirit of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us from God. And I am admonished to say, Yes, truly, no man knows the things of God but the Spirit of God. But how, then, do we also know what things are given us by God? The answer is given me, Because we know these things by his Spirit, for no one knows but the Spirit of God. But just as it is truly said to those who were to speak through the Spirit of God, It is not you who speak, so it is also truly said to them who know through the Spirit of God, it is not you yourselves who know. And just as rightly it may be said to those who perceive through the Spirit of God that a thing is good, it is not they who see, but God who seeth that it is good. It is therefore one thing to think like the men who judge something to be bad when it is good, as do those whom we have already mentioned. It is quite another thing that a man should see as good what is good, as is the case with many whom thy creation pleases because it is good, yet what pleases them in it is not thee, and so they would prefer to find their joy in thy creatures rather than to find their joy in thee. It is still another thing that when a man sees a thing to be good, God should see in him that it is good that truly he may be loved in what he hath made, he who cannot be loved except through the Holy Spirit which he hath given us. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who is given to us. It is by him that we see whatever we see to be good in any degree, since it is from him who doth not exist in any particular degree, but who simply is what he is. Chapter 32 Thanks be to thee, O Lord. We see the heaven and the earth, either the corporeal part, higher and lower, or the spiritual and physical creation. 
and we see the light made and divided from the darkness for the adornment of these parts, from which the universal mass of the world, or the universal creation, is constituted. We see the firmament of heaven, either the original body of the world between the spiritual or higher waters and the corporeal or lower waters, or the expanse of air, which is also called heaven, through which the fowls of heaven wander, between the waters which move in clouds above them, and which drop down in dew on clear nights, and those waters which are heavy and flow along the earth. We see the waters gathered together in the vast plains of the sea, and the dry land, first bare and then formed, so as to be visible and well ordered, and the soil of herbs and trees. We see the light shining from above, the sun to serve the day, the moon and the stars to give cheer in the night, and we see by all these that the intervals of time are marked and noted. We see on every side the watery elements, fruitful with fishes, beasts, and birds, and we notice that the density of the atmosphere which supports the flights of birds is increased by the evaporation of the waters. We see the face of the earth replete with earthly creatures, and man created in thy image and likeness, in the very image and likeness of thee, that is, having the power of reason and understanding, by virtue of which he has been set over all irrational creatures. And just as there is in his soul one element which controls by its power of reflection, and another which has been made subject so that it should obey, so also physically the woman was made for the man, for although she has a like nature of rational intelligence in the mind, still in the sex of her body she should be similarly subject to the sex of her husband, as the appetite of action is subjected to the deliberation of the mind in order to conceive the rules of right action. These things we see, and each of them is good, and the whole is very good. Chapter 33 let thy works praise thee, that we may love thee. And let us love thee, that thy works may praise thee. Those works which have a beginning and an end in time, a rising and a setting, a growth and a decay, a form and a privation. Thus they have their successions of morning and evening, partly hidden, partly plain. For they were made from nothing by thee, and not from thyself, and not from any matter that is not thine, or that was created beforehand. They were created from concreated matter, that is, matter that was created by thee at the same time that thou didst form its formlessness, without any interval of time. Yet, since the matter of heaven and earth is one thing, and the form of heaven and earth is another thing, thou didst create matter out of absolutely nothing, but the form of the world thou didst form from formless matter. But both were done at the same time, so that form followed matter with no delaying interval. CHAPTER 34 We have also explored the question of what thou didst desire to figure forth, both in the creation and in the description of things, in this particular order and we have seen that things taken separately are good, and all things taken together are very good, both in heaven and earth. And we have seen that this was wrought through thy word, thy only Son, the head and the body of the church, and it signifies thy predestination before all times, without morning and evening. But when in time thou didst begin to unfold the things destined before time, so that thou mightest make hidden things manifest, and mightest reorder our disorders. Since our sins were over us, and we had sunk into profound darkness away from thee, and thy good spirit was moving over us to help us in due season, thou didst justify the ungodly, and also didst divide them from the wicked. And thou madest the authority of thy book a firmament between those above who would be amenable to thee, and those beneath who would be subject to them. And thou didst gather the society of unbelievers into a conspiracy, in order that the zeal of the faithful might become manifest, 
and that they might bring forth works of mercy unto thee, giving their earthly riches to the poor to obtain heavenly riches. Then thou didst kindle the lights in the firmament, which are thy holy ones, who have the word of life, and who shine with an exalted authority, warranted to them by their spiritual gifts. And then, for the instruction of the unbelieving nations, thou didst out of physical matter produce the mysteries, and the visible miracles, and the sounds of words in harmony with the firmament of thy book, through which the faithful should be blessed. After this thou didst form the living soul of the faithful, through the ordering of their passions by the strength of continence. And then thou didst renew, after thy image and likeness, the mind which is faithful to thee alone, which needs to imitate no human authority. Thus thou didst subordinate rational action to the higher excellence of intelligence, as the woman is subordinate to the man. Finally, in all thy ministries which were needed to perfect the faithful in this life, thou didst will that these same faithful ones should themselves bring forth good things, profitable for their temporal use, and fruitful for the life to come. We see all these things, and they are very good, because thou seest them thus in us. Thou who hast given us thy spirit, by which we may see them so, and love thee in them. Chapter 35 O Lord, grant us thy peace, for thou hast given us all things. Grant us the peace of quietness, the peace of the Sabbath, the peace without an evening. All this most beautiful array of things, all so very good, will pass away when all their courses are finished, for in them there is both morning and evening. Chapter 36 But the seventh day is without an evening, and it has no setting, for thou hast sanctified it with an everlasting duration. After all thy works of creation, which were very good, thou didst rest on the seventh day, although thou hadst created them all in unbroken rest, and this so that the voice of thy book might speak to us with the prior assurance that after our works, and they also are very good, because thou hast given them to us, we may find our rest in thee in the Sabbath of life eternal. Chapter 37 for then also thou shalt so rest in us, as now thou workest in us. And thus that will be thy rest through us, as these are thy works through us. But thou, O Lord, workest evermore, and art always at rest. Thou seest not in time, thou movest not in time, thou restest not in time. And yet thou makest all those things which are seen in time, indeed the very times themselves, and everything that proceeds in and from time. Chapter 38 We can see all those things which thou hast made, because they are, but they are because thou seest them. And we see with our eyes that they are, and we see with our minds that they are good. But thou sawest them as made, when thou sawest that they would be made. And now, in this present time, we have been moved to do well, now that our heart has been quickened by thy Spirit. But in the former time, having forsaken thee, we were moved to do evil. But thou, O the one good God, hast never ceased to do good. And we have accomplished certain good works by thy good gifts. And even though they are not eternal, Still we hope, after these things here, to find our rest in thy great sanctification. But thou art the good, and needest no rest, and art always at rest, because thou thyself art thy own rest. What man will teach men to understand this? And what angel will teach the angels? Or what angels will teach men? We must ask it of thee. We must seek it in thee. We must knock for it at thy door. Only thus shall we receive. Only thus shall we find. Only thus shall thy door be opened. 
End of Book Thirteen, Chapters Thirty through Thirty Eight, and End of Confessions by Saint Augustine.